Hello and welcome to a speedrun of Rome Total War 2. We will together bring back the glory of the Roman Empire as quickly and effectively as possible. We'll be playing on the game mode Grand Campaign on normal difficulty. And we will go for the House of Julia because it was the first house proposed to us. Because in the wise words of President Arnold Schwarzenegger, I was elected to lead, not to read. With that being said, let's get started. Right off the bat, the game starts us off with the territories of Roma, Neapolis, Brundisium, and Cosentia, if I even pronounced those correctly. And puts us at war with the Etruscan League. Lovely, because we only need their land for the first part of our little project of conquest. Because for that, we'll be conquering all of Italy to establish strong trade relations along with a strong economy. See, the key to conquer and dominate the regions we need requires armies, and for armies we need money, men, also very important, food. We set our sights to Velarthri and send our army of 1,280 men strong, the Legio II Equestris, to engage the champions of Uni, standing only at 360 men weak. Needless to say, we are the champions, losing only 94 men while they lose all 360. As I have heard throughout my life, size doesn't matter, so in this case we have already proven ourselves as true warriors, regardless the scale of the enemy army. After terminating their enlistment contracts early, we make our way to the town of Velarthri, conquering it with ease, growing our empire one little bit. After occupying the city of Velarthri, our treasury grows slightly. Now a wise man would probably invest these funds into agriculture or infrastructure for the Roman Empire. This wise man cannot be found at the moment, so instead we decide to invest it all into our army, growing it just a little bit, but just enough, because everybody knows a strong empire has a strong army. Now for the next city to take. As you see here, the Etruscan League have the island of Corsica. I'm sure that they must feel very safe and secluded from this war there. Well, let me tell you what, let's change that. We start by telling the Legio 1 Italica to start packing their swim trunks because they have now been upgraded from infantry to navy. I don't really know how much of an upgrade that is, but let's just say it's an upgrade for them. And then we use our actual navy to blockade the seaports. The enemy doesn't take too kindly of our occupation, so they decide to engage us. I mean, the audacity of these guys, can you believe them? So we are unfortunately... Um, yeah, we retreat. But, of course, it's all tactical. As our navy attempts to conquer the island of Corsica and tactically retreats, we should remember we still have an army conquering Ariminium, which, unlike our navy, it executes with little resistance. Oh, would you look at that. The sun is set. I mean, the uh, Truscans have unfortunately underestimated our navy. Though they are 1100 strong and we a mere 500, we yet still make easy work of them, killing a little over 900 of their seamen. I guess we also took care of their next generation too. It would seem that the Etruscan League is getting a little desperate now. And we like that. Because that means we're winning. It all looks very promising for now. The Roman war machine is gaining little momentum step by step, so now we set our sights to the northern parts of Italy, specifically Patavium. But before declaring war, we decide to blow almost the entire treasury on upgrading the region of Italia. After spending some time upgrading the region, the town of Velarthri managed to muster an army, understandably of course, and an army stronger than anticipated, so we uh, withdraw back toward Velarthri. All tactical, of course. But all is not lost, because now we can finally engage the island of Corsica. Defended by a measly 922 men, we attack with our 2,160 troops, thus ending the reign of the Etruscan League and establishing Roman rule in the region. You're welcome, Corsica. But let's not get sidetracked. You see, the mission at hand here is to take over all of Italy. And Patavium seems like a bit of a tough target at the moment. So instead we'll settle for the people of Genua. Genua? Genua. Either way, they belong to Laguaria. Or, yeah. And it seems like an easier target. So, why the hell not? 
So we send the Legio second Equestress right to the doorstep of Genoa. Liguaria, noticing how powerful Rome is, attempts to reason with us and sue for peace immediately. Well, let me tell you what. For me, suing for peace, that's just weakness. And weakness, well, that means you're easy to be conquered. And if you're easy to be conquered, well, that means we'll conquer you. So, Liguaria, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Call me MC Pompey, because after capturing Genoa, I guess you could say that we only have two cities in our way before we could successfully say that we have executed Plan A. Those towns being Medellin and Patavium. After indoctrinating Genoa into the Roman way of life and upgrading one of the smaller armies which we have created before the invasion of Genoa, we notice that our troops over by Corsica are riddled with some sort of disease. Now, my best guess is that it is some form of STD, considering that these men are sailors, and doing what sailors do best, probably visited the local whorehouses and spread the disease throughout the ranks. But grab a handful of garum and rub it on your crotch, for the people of LaGuaria are in our territory, and we can't have that. So, we make quick work of them. Okay, they're right by the border, I don't know what they're plotting. They also have two armies, but it's nothing I can't deal with. These guys have built... Oh, wow, they actually have a stacked up army. Hmm. It's okay. Uh, let's work on the finances a bit. Up the budgets. And that was it. There we go. Cool. Fix the finances. After fixing the finances, I send the Legio III over to support the Legio II, so they can together conquer the city of Medellin. Medellin being a walled city poses a bit of a difficulty for us, but it's nothing a few siege weapons can't handle. We siege the city of Medellin for several turns, increasing our chances of taking the city. This also increases their desperateness, so they try to broker peace with us. Naturally, we reject their offer. At this point, I'm starting to get a little bit ambitious. I see the city of Corrales is ripe for the taking, and after my men have rubbed some garum on their crotches, I decide to declare war on Carthage, in hopes that I can take more land, thus gain more money and more power, and build a larger army for the Empire. As the men are marching their way towards Corrales, I decide now's the time to strike Medellin. So, we strike, taking a large yet affordable amount of losses. After that, we move in towards Corrales, outnumbering them enough that we don't have to siege the city, so we just move in and take it for ourselves. As our empire grows, so does our borders, and the larger the borders, the more troops we'll need to defend them. We see Belissa getting a little bit close, also building an army, so we'll have to keep a watchful eye on them, and consider a possible preemptive strike. We see now that the army that was guarding Patavium has moved away, so we decide to declare war. As we declare war, we see that Patavium is run by the Venti, and that the Venti have actually grown a little bit as an empire. Now, we can't have that. There can only be one empire, and that is the Roman Empire. So we decide to do what we do best. We hit them fast, and we hit them hard. We send the Legio III to capture the city of Jader, as the Legio II stands close to the city of Patavium, keeping a watchful eye on the Venti army that is near the coast. As war is raging on the mainland, from the coast of Corrales I notice Carthago and lock my eyes on her like a desperate man at a bar. Yet this time, I actually make a move. I send my navy and army straight for her walls. Now, as we near Carthago, we notice that it has a large army and is well defended, which makes sense for a capital city. What doesn't make sense is to attack a capital city with a small army, like I just did. Not the wisest of decisions, but as I've said before, the wise man is gone. So we try to withdraw our troops from Carthago, but it seems that they have other plans in mind. And looking at the battle of statistics, this seems like it might be the first battle we actually lose. Which is quite an embarrassment for Rome. But we won't go down without a fight, and we'll try and attempt to win this battle. We won't just try and win this battle via tactics and good training, but we'll try and implement the secret weapon which the enemy does not have. The power of friendship. The eyes of the Senate and all Rome are upon us today. We must make them proud that we are their defenders. More than that, our Roman gods are watching. Make sure they are 
are not ashamed. fucking kidding me? <sighs> was it worth it? Was it worth it sending an army to their deaths in the attempt of capturing a capital city, knowing full well that it would not succeed? Yes, of course it was fucking worth it! Are you kidding me? The fact is, we have sent a message to the people of Carthage that Rome, Rome is coming. If anything, we'll build a monument, write down some names on a stone or something for these guys, but the matter of the fact is, you can't make Garum without killing a few fish. I guess we'll have to see in the next episode where this goes. They will also attempt to conquer France and Spain. A bit of a bold move, but seeing how the Roman war machine is moving along, I see it very feasible. Stay tuned for next time. Thank you. Do you have to do that here? Yes, I have to do this here. You never gave me a space to do this. You told me I could do this. <laughs>